How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 2. And we are pretty much where we left off, about to uh, either get our ass kicked or commence ass kicking in a uh, wild tournament. I still feel like the music is louder than I'm used to, or maybe it's this one track. I don't know. Before we get back into things, and, and there's really no recap, we're kind of just jumping into this, really. I want to mention that I am an idiot. And that's pretty much all there is to it. But I am an idiot, and I am very blind to a lot of, I guess, undertones, if you will. A lot of things that are either very blatant and right in front of me, or things that aren't exactly as such, but are there. So if there's any, like, foreshadowing or, like, hidden details or something, I might miss them. So if I do miss anything, feel free to leave comments and, you know, make sure that I'm good to go. If I miss any sort of details that is important to the story, you guys in the comments are a part of this ride. So definitely let me know if I miss anything. And to conclude, yes, I am an idiot. First, we used to draw, uh, or we used a draw, excuse me, to split into five groups. Everybody lined up single file and began to draw tickets that the shop owner had prepared. It was my turn. Alright, time to draw. No matter who I was up against, I'll crush them. Or I would crush them. At that moment, Mion began to laugh with a hawkish gleam in her eye. Heh, <laughs> Contrary to how simple it sounded, it was a terrifying eventuality, the subject of which no one could predict. Damn you, Mion. Was she really planning on parading me around Hinamizawa in cat ears and a banana hammock with a tail attached or something? The look on Mion's face told me that she wasn't going to let me off that easy. On top of that, this time, it wasn't just the person who finished last who'd have to submit to the penalty game. No. The look in Mion's eye became that of a lion bearing its fangs. Even so, I didn't feel threatened. The more into it my opponent was, the stronger I would become. Oh boy, the hype. The results of the draw were enough to make you cry conspiracy. All the members of the club were nicely divvied up amongst the five tables. How did this happen when the draw was that random? The thought that I was already caught in Mion's puppet strings made me feel uneasy. That was fine though. I'll crush all your petty tricks. Now, where were my opponents? Everybody was headed to the table corresponding to the number on their ticket. Oh hey, we actually get some sprites for these characters. Uh, the competition at my table was these two, huh? Uh, they look younger than me. Huh? Tomita. Okamura. Okamoto Kun greed me by nodding his head. Uh, so my opening round was to be against my juniors from school. Uh, just saying, but it seemed like a pretty easy matchup. Lucky. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves, you know? What do these guys look like in the other styles? Is it... Oh. Oh, art style remake. Original. Oh, wait, that's the console. No. But we want remake, right? Or did I have it on console? I also think I'm pressing the wrong button in the first place. Uh, no, actually we're good, I think. It was P that I was pressing. So, I guess this is just all there is. 
And I think I had it on remake. Actually, maybe I didn't. I guess I had it on console. Does it really matter? I, I haven't really noticed any big difference yet. We can just keep it where it's at, I suppose. But anyways, let us can actually continue here. With Mion's declaration, the inside of the store suddenly became a lively. Everybody was yelling their favorite games at each other, trying to gain an advantage before they started. Even my two classmates, who seemed a tech turn at first glance, began to fiercely insist on their own games as soon as the signal was given. Of course, I would kick those suggestions aside. There was absolutely no reason to pick a game your opponent was good at. Of course, they didn't agree to the games I suggested either. I can only smirk bitterly. Naturally, after five minutes, this table still couldn't agree on a game. Obeying the rules, we asked the store owner to decide on a game. Clearing his throat, the shop owner brought over a board game from the back of the store. It was a game called Billionaire. Quite the vintage we have here. Come to think of it, if you lose, you have to buy this game. That damn shop owner. Was he using this competition to get rid of all the games he couldn't sell? Wait, is this Monopoly? The two nodded in agreement, and finally the game was underway. You know, besides the spin the wheel part. At that time, I already had a feeling of impending crisis. I wouldn't realize why until the game progressed a bit. Okay, wait, maybe this is like the game of life. Okay, I've built a bit of a lead. This is how you learn to count. Jesus. What? The tables were turned in an instant. Whoa, that's a good route. It seemed like only my piece was landing on the steady spaces. I had doubts as to why Mion didn't bring out board games for club activities, but that reason was laid bare to me before my eyes. That's right, I had only realized it now. This game was completely based on luck. What could I possibly do to make sure I ended up in first place at the end? The ultimate outcome of this game was decided in a place beyond human hands. How were there, or how were the other club members doing? My eyes naturally wandered off the other tables, or off to the other tables. Mion's table was, what? They weren't doing anything? Had they still not decided on a game? This naive idea existed to distract me from the most frighteningly possibility. Mion was lounging about, leisurely holding some juice she bought from the vending machine outside in one hand. When our eyes met, she gave me a look of ease. It couldn't be. She'd already finished? What game was it? That easily? It was probably too late to be concerned with that at this point. Only five minutes since we started, and her two opponents were already beyond recourse. They were sitting there slumped over in disappointment muttering to themselves, trying to figure out what they or where they went wrong, and for that they'd find no answer. Was there any reason for their defeat other than they sat at the same table as Mion? Then what about Rena's table? The spectators were causing quite a commotion. It looked like their game was Karuda. The shop owner was apparently the one reading out the cards. Rena tended to dawdle along and space out a lot. Wouldn't she have a hard time with this game? Jesus. At the same instant the shop owner began sounding out the words, the card in question disappeared off the face of the table. No, the face of the earth! Impossible. Where did it go? It was against Rena's cheek. She was rubbing it there. Oh, 
Looking at the card, Rena was rubbing against her cheek. It was some anime-themed version of Karuta, with rather cute Moe illustrations decorating the cards. Basically, it was a picture of a pretty dog girl with a slightly large chest, panting in half in tears as she was being pulled along on a chain. What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? Wait a minute. With those types of pictures, even I could play with godlike speed. Of all people to play that game, it had to be Rena. It was entirely possible that her fingertips were on the verge of breaking the sound barrier. Mion smiled coolly. Seeing no further reason to keep watching, she turned back. After that, the second the card started being read out, explosions occurred and, and such divisive sounds echoed. God. <laughs> oh, well then, what about Sotoko? No, oh, she was playing a rather orthodox game. Concentration. And judging from the distressed look on Sadako's face, it seemed that she was struggling somehow. One of the main characteristics of concentration is that the pace of the game speeds up as it goes on. As the number of cards to memorize decreases, it becomes easier to match several pairs in a row. It wouldn't be exaggeration to say that the first person to take over the flow of the match can run away as the winner. The cards still in play had decreased. If you memorize the cards that had been turned over before, you should have a good chance to sweep the table at this point. Sadako probably knew the positions of all the remaining cards. However, her turn came a little too late. If her opponents followed up, the match would be decided. <laughs> This guy. Did he have the locations of the remaining cards memorized? He was completely certain of his victory. The tension on his face relaxed. <laughs> I whispered that in a bored manner as I turned my attention back to my own game. I spun the wheel. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> There was a commotion at Sadako's table as the shout rang out. The other two at my table turned around in surprise. I didn't. After all, there really wasn't anything to be surprised about. The onlookers were confounded, most of them certain that the Ace of Hearts should have been there. There's no way I must be seeing things, it must have been because I was so excited. So assured in his victory, the distress over his defeat ran deep. Huh. And that's how it is. If his opponent wasn't Sotoko, then the Ace of Hearts certainly would have been there. What a fool. When you're up against Sotoko, you can't let your guard down for a moment until the battle is over. With a refined tone of voice, reserved only for winners, Sotoko called out to me. God damn it. For the casual observer, it must have looked like she only eat out a victory. From my point of view, however, she was only playing around. The roles of winner and loser had already been decided. It was nothing more than child's play. The laughable part about it was that her opponent didn't know his role had already been assigned. Sadako was a trapper. Not a trap, a trapper. Her true talent was never having one misfire. Setting off only one trap was more than enough. Huh, ain't that cool. The fact that the other club members were winning one after another with their own brand of play only added to my impatience at my own lack of progress. Alright, how was Rika-chan doing? How was our club's sly little fox do- What the heck is that? Over in that corner, the mood at that table was decidedly different from the others. The game at Rika-chan's table was... You know that battery-powered fishing game? The one where the fish opened and closed their mouths as they rotated on the platform, and you used a magnetic fishing rod to pick them up? That old thing- Actually, yeah, wait a minute. I think I- I think I own that. It seemed they planned on competing by seeing who could catch the most fish, but it had become an atmosphere you could only, you could hardly call competitive. 
したですようまいうまいリカちゃんうまいよおっとっとまたつられちゃったよリカちゃんはうまいな huh? I knew that Rika chan had already charmed her opponents along with the onlookers before the matches had even begun but brilliantly played She's yeah, I think I said this in the first episode of this, but she's gonna be the one The one that's gonna be the toughest to deal with whenever we get to her chapter That corner had become an informal meeting of the Rika Fru- How do you pronounce her last name again? Furude fan club? Furude? Let's go with that I mean, if you want to. You know what? Never mind. Rika chan got t e r n o a tabun sakana chan n i t o m o n a Hearing that, she glanced over my way briefly. I am struggling to open a water bottle. This is pathetic. This is my way of getting serious. And that's what I heard. Rika ni shika deki nai. Rika da kara yuru sare ru o w a s a desu wa ne. Sorry, was、uh, drinking. Yeah, a masterful technique. My brother's on the band is your. Ah, smart, smart. Or the banker. Each knee. That's the end of three choke cousin. Oh, we're losing. Go on to Lucy Hara. Are we in the negatives now? In contrast, my game. What an unseemingly situation this was. Yeah, honestly. Noticing the uneasiness creeping across my face, my companions came to see how I was doing. Okamura, who had wrung lots of money out of the elite course, began to count through a stack of white $100,000 bills. Sorry, I was looking at my phone. Those two, it looked like they would easily surpass a million dollars. De? Kei chan wa ikura motten no? Mion's tone of voice was grim from the get go. It was her disappointment and disgust as club president. Rika chan gently pet my head. Still, she wasn't too happy. Like I said, how am I supposed to make a comeback with this game relying entirely on luck? Right, Mion? Mion's face, however, was almost unbelievably indifferent. Like she was watching something completely unexciting. She then turned her back without saying a word. It was a pathetic voice that irked even myself. I think you actually can, right? It's hard, but you can basically do that. But you don't know where you're gonna land. This is the game of life, right? Mion, in a bad mood, cast me aside and disappeared into the depths of the shop. Maybe it was because it had become an awkward situation, but the spectators dispersed from around my table. Damn it. Are you saying I'm not serious about this? Are you saying if I were serious, I would have settled this game of chance in 10 seconds? If I were serious. If I were serious. 
Everyone was, or everybody was praying for my victory. They believed in me. Did I betray their expectations? Was it because I wasn't serious? Ugh. The two of them were timidly trying to resume play. I didn't respond to that. The table sunk into silence. The owner, thinking I was forfeiting, started to announce the cancellation of the game. At that moment, the demon inside me let loose a howl and awakened. I get it now, Mion. What it means for me to be serious. I was not expecting that. This game, man, I'm telling you. I don't know what sound effect that's supposed to be. I clamped my hands on their shoulders, speaking in a low voice after pulling them closer. The two of them, not immediately understanding what I had just said, or the meaning behind it, were momentarily confused. The two of them considered it briefly. <laughs> we club members have a penalty game separate from the casual participants. If we lose, we have to obey a single command from the winner. From another point of view, the winner earns the prize of being able to order the other club members around. Wait, what? <laughs> what the fuck? I drew the two of them a red face and conscious of whether anybody else heard what I just said even closer. Not really sure you can include lollies in that, but yeah, okay. Okay, we definitely scream for the moe, but only that. That sensitive age where you couldn't say you liked the girl you liked, understanding that gave me all the more power. What? A red fountain spewed from both of Tomita kun's nostrils, of course. Blood erupted from the vein in Okumura kun's for Okay, wait, hold up. That uh, that sounds a little, a little bit more dangerous there. But what happens if we lose, you know? There's always that possibility, and it has happened before. Well, in the other game, that is. And then I suddenly lowered the tone of my voice. It was this moment that the values of men bridge generations. If that's what you want to call it. <laughs> you would. You adorable yet gullible brats. Did I ever have a mentor who ever spoke my mind for me so strongly? Never. There was no way there was. 
And that's because in a man's lifetime, he'll only have three fateful encounters. And that valuable first time was being experienced right this moment with these two. Wait, we're, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> it's It was such an assertive declaration of the game's ending that everybody in the store turned and looked. It had been less than three minutes since I was on the verge of forfeit, and all the spectators were, were certain of my loss. <laughs> you idiots. The two of them, stifling tears of gratitude, answered strongly from the bottom of their hearts. Exactly what kind of miracle occurred here during those three minutes the spectators all looked away from my utter disadvantage? The spectators were puzzled at how I was able to so quickly overcome that hopeless situation. That guy. Is he able to control the spinner wheel with his eyes or something? It's a miracle. What devilry is this? He's in cahoots with that, Mion, you know. There's no doubt he had some strange trick up his sleeve. I looked at the crowd who couldn't help but be excited out of the corner of my eye. Now fully awakened and in battle mode, I let out a derisive laugh. <laughs> Bearing our fangs at each other, we laughed together in a most unsightly fashion. Sadako and Rena smiled or sneered at each other. Huh, these guys. Do they really think they can win against Keiichi Maibara when he gets serious? Mio, you know, I think she just likes the thrill, you know. Oh, she's embarrassed. She's embarrassed. どうするのみーちゃん。5人でどう戦うのかな。この。さて。これだけ豪華な面々が揃ったんだからね。今日という日を急ぐのが惜しいよ。みーの言ってる意味が難しいです。まさかてめえ。Mio's hair flowed elegantly, almost like a cape. As she turned her back to the table. Ah, so the final round isn't gonna happen here, but elsewhere. <laughs> the combative aura billowing out of Mion's body formed a barrier, stopping Sadako's advance. With a shrill laugh, Mion left the store. After a moment of silence, the crowd erupted into cheers. When will they resume the contest? Mion's serious. The other members did great too. That new guy, Maibara, he's got some strange power. He turned the tables in an instant.
Yeah, apparently there's a lot riding on this now. The part of the crowd that had apparently overheard the covenant between Tomita-kun and Okamura-kun and myself erupted into a cheer again. Mion's going to win anyways. She's the undefeated Empress. I'm betting on Mion. No, it's going to be Rena with an ungodly speed. Sadako, the trap artist. Don't don't call her that. <laughs> Rika, the siren. Siren. It may be a long shot, but it will be my bro. However, right now I had no ear for those cheerful voices. Setting the stage for this huge match and then running away like that, I wasn't going to forgive Mion. Outside the store, Mion was getting on her bike as the shop owner was seeing her off. Oh. Huh? Like you would see in a sketchy comedy show, my legs slipped in opposite directions until I was doing the splits. せっかく暑くなってきたのに、ついてないよ。I was a little surprised. You would never think that this was the club president exuding such a dark aura inside the store just a short time ago. It was the unusual, or it was the usual Mion right now, excuse me, almost exasperatingly so. I probably said that wrong, and my shoulders slumped. That's right. Club mode was, was over now. But it was really heated today. It really was fun. Damn Mion, she really knows how to fire people up. この続き本当にやりたいですわねいつがいいでございましょうわたながしのお祭りでやるのなんていいですよああ Right now, what were Rika-chan and Mion talking about? What Tanagashi festival? Cotton drifting five deep in what? <laughs> she laughed with a smile that made you feel refreshed just looking at it. At that moment, the shop owner came out carrying a paper bag. I wonder what it is. Is he giving it to us? When Sadako and Rika-chan open up the bag, there were cute little stuffed animals inside. It was a stuffed toy wearing a beautiful dress, one you'd use to play house. Rena's eyes were glued to my stuffed doll. Sadako was the same, and Rika-chan too. <laughs> 
あれな趣味の人扱いだね。Oh yeah, definitely. Mio didn't have to go that far. This wasn't something a guy like me should be carrying around. Mio was the only one who hadn't received a present, so I thought about giving it to her. However, after briefly considering, I gave it to Rena instead. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really expecting something that large. Mion laughed after saying such an ominous line. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Everybody laughed heartily along with her. <laughs> Mion chan, if you don't get going soon, the shop owner told her meekly. A lot of us looked like we were having a lot of fun, so it must have been hard to put a wet blanket on things. Everybody waved their hands and watched as Mion left. Before I knew it, the sun was already setting, and the breeze carried a hint of chill. Off we go. Back on home. Alright, we will end the episode here. I don't know if we're close to the end of the、uh, first section here or not. Either way, gotta wrap it up. Damn, that was fun. I kind of missed, you know, just the, the laid back, chill, but competitive, aggressive, wild, whatever you want to call this shit type of stuff. But I know, again, very soon, at some point, everything's gonna drift away into scary shit. And somebody was telling me in the comments that apparently、um, the difficulty level that is stated in these games is more on terms of, like, I, I guess, information gathering, the storytelling, if you will. So obviously things are going to be difficult to understand in, the, in our first get go, but hopefully things become clearer and clearer as we go along. And, and man, some of those lines there that, that Mian was throwing around, I don't know how I feel about that. But we, we know it's coming very soon. We just don't know when or how. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.